over a year ago at this point, I made a video where I tried to speedrun a little phone game called Flow Free. It's a very simple puzzle game, and I had a lot of fun making that video. One of my complaints during that video was that the phone I was using was very, very old and very slow, which did not help a lot when I was trying to do a speedrun. And I have recently gotten a new phone, so I figured I might as well try again and see if there was really that big of a difference if I was just making excuses last time or if getting a brand new phone makes that much of a difference in the actual speedrun time. That was the plan at least. However, um, my plan deviated a little. I'm not sure whether or not they had this option last time I played or not, but I've never seen it before. When I opened the app this time, they actually had a whole section just called time trials. So it was basically like a built-in speedrun. <laughs> kind of, but not really. Instead of trying to do a certain number of levels and seeing just how fast you can do them, it would give you a countdown timer and then you would have to complete as many levels as you could within that time limit. This video is now me completing the time trials. I'm gonna use the data from the time trials to like compare it to the last time I did to see if I did improve any. So that's all gonna be at the end. So if you don't like math, you don't have to stick around for that. I'm gonna use the beginning of this video to talk about the difference between the two and how different the game is now, if there is any difference. And then at the end, we'll do all our comparisons and see if I've actually improved. So in my old video, I actually had a few rules in order to make the speed run, I don't know, fair. <laughs> the rules were to obviously complete the first 150 levels as fast as you can. Hints were allowed only because um, of an accident that I did back then, but you know, whatever. And then my last rule was to put on airplane mode to make sure that I didn't get any pop-up ads. As you can see in my footage, I actually forgot to do that for the first few levels on this one. I am the curator. While the ads didn't interrupt the levels themselves, and it wasn't like a speed run where that actually counted against me, um, it was still incredibly annoying. I don't know if it's an exaggeration to say it broke my focus or anything like that, but it's definitely not pleasant to be like trying to complete something as fast as you can, which is minorly stressful, and then be suddenly interrupted by I am the curator. Another difference between doing the time trials versus just trying to speed run the first 150 levels, you don't have to get a perfect on the time trials for it to count, right? So in my my speedrun of the first 150 levels, a requirement for myself was that I got perfect on the level. I didn't just complete it, I got perfect. That's not a requirement on the time trials, obviously. You can just complete the level and it counts as completed. However, for me, I still made sure they were perfect. So there were plenty of times where I could have completed a level without it being perfect, maybe a little bit faster than trying to get it perfectly, but I would still go out of my way to make sure I was doing it as perfect as possible, which is probably not good for a time trial, and I would love to say that it's for consistency's sake, but but um, it's really because I like to do that. I like to have it perfect every single time. Beyond that, it's exactly like normal flow free. You have a bunch of different sizes of boards that you can solve, but the time remains the same. So it's really easy and fun to compare your numbers between the board sizes, which is actually a great way to get into how well I did. Did I do good at the time trials? It's hard to tell whether or not I did good or not because I don't have anybody else to compare this to. I can only really compare it to myself and the other time trials I did on the other side boards, but I think I did okay. Again, at the end of the video, we're gonna do some math so that we can compare it to when I sped run the first 150 levels last year, and we can do some actual comparisons there. But for right now, uh, this is just baseline data. I don't have any other data to go off of. That being said, let's go over, uh, how did I do? So there's five different stages. There's five by five, six by six, seven by seven, eight by eight, and then nine by nine. So those are the board sizes. With each board size, you get four time trials. You get 30 seconds, one minute, two minutes, and four minutes. So so starting off basic with the 5x5, five five, we can look at the, the 30 seconds and see that I did 10 levels in 30 seconds on the 5x5 five five board. Going to 1 minute, I was able to complete 18, 2 minutes, 37, 4 minutes, 78. Every single board size follows the same kind of pattern. So looking at these results overall, again, I can't really compare it to anything but my own, I guess just like what I think is good and what isn't. Um, I will say the 78 one, I guess, is kind of impressive, especially when on my next 6x6 I only completed 99 puzzles overall and it is pretty interesting that in the 7x7 and the 8x8 I was still able to complete 3 in both the 30 second category. I also like uh, the 7x7 a lot because the numbers are 3, 9, 18, and 33 which are all multiples of 3 which I just think is fun. But overall I think there's a fairly good and standardized ratio between them all, right? There aren't really a lot of outliers. As the time goes up the number of boards completed also exponentially goes up which makes sense. More time equals more boards. If you're not a fan of math, this is probably where the video is going to mostly end for you. Time trials was fun. It was a little bit different than the like classic standard way of doing it. It's a really good challenge and you can get faster and faster at it. For me, I would like to see my averages and you get averages by doing math. <laughs> I've already done all the math for 
you. You don't need to do any work, but I will take you along the journey because I find this stuff very interesting. For example, we have my five by fives. I converted each time into seconds because that's an easier time frame to work with. 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 120 seconds, and 240 seconds. On this side, we have the number of levels completed in each of those seconds. We've got 10 puzzles solved, 18 puzzles solved, 37 puzzles solved, and 78 puzzles solved respectively. In order to get my average, I added up all the times, which is 450 seconds. It takes 450 seconds to do all of the boards. It's gonna be the exact same in every single board category because it's a timed trial. These times never change. So this number is also never gonna change. This number, however, adding up all of the boards solved is gonna change. For my five by fives, it was 143 total puzzles solved. Now we can easily find our average by, di by dividing our time by how many puzzles we solve. So basically, how many seconds does it take to complete one puzzle in the five by five category, which would be 3.15 seconds. So it takes me a little over pi amount of time to complete one puzzle in the five by five category. I went ahead and did this for every single category. For our six by sixes, again, our times are all the exact same because of the way this uh, section of the game works, but respectively, we got eight, 11, 27, and 53 puzzles solved. Add it all together, makes 99 total puzzles solved. We're gonna divide that by our time to get exactly how long it takes to solve one puzzle. And it takes me about 4.55 seconds to solve one puzzle. Now, all of these numbers are rounded up to two decimal points, so it is like not exact numbers, so it is a, a round. 4.55, but if I had numbers all the way up to here, that's not as easy to work with. So I rounded everything up to two decimal places. For our seven by sevens, respectively, I got three, nine, 18, and 33. Again, I love these sets of numbers because they're multiples of three. That means I got a total of 63 puzzles solved in total, which means that it took me approximately 7.14 seconds to solve each puzzle in the seven by seven category. So we can see a steady rise in how long it takes me to complete each puzzle. Again, this makes sense due to <laughs> the nature of the task. Our eight by eights, I got three, six, 11, and 20, which means a total of 40 puzzles solved with a time of 11.25 seconds per puzzle in the eight by eight category. And then our last board category is nine by nine, where I got two, five, 11, and 18 for a total of 36 total puzzles solved, which means that each puzzle took me about 12 and a half seconds. So those are my averages per board. And in my first video, I did say that doing all of the 150 levels, I didn't calculate it per board size, but I did calculate how long it approximately took me with all of them combined together, which is about 10 seconds. So if you look at my results, I would venture to guess at this point in the math that I have in fact improved. So if I found that 10 seconds per board level back when I was averaging in every single board size and if all the way up to six by six were under 10 seconds and seven by seven was only a little over 10 seconds I'd say those are fairly good odds to saying that I'm getting faster or at least getting a better phone has improved my speed and I'm sure you're wondering how can you tell though how can you take this data that I've already found and basically transfer that into a way for me to calculate how long it would take me to do those 150 levels now with a new phone with after it's been a full year. I don't know if I've gotten any faster or not, but we can actually use this math to guess. Obviously, the only way we know for sure is for me to actually physically do it, but using these numbers, I can venture a guess. So I took all our numbers, our five by five through our nine by nine, and then we're gonna, gonna multiply them by 30. In the classic uh, 150 first levels, um, there's 30 of each board size. So by adding each of our times together and multiplying them all by 30 is the same as multiplying each one individually by 30 and then adding them all together. Thanks to PIMDAS, we can use that to see how long it would take me to do all 150 levels. And assuming that these averages remain the same, that would give us a total of 1,157.7 seconds to complete the classic 150 levels to perfection. Again, because in my own requirement, that is definitely not necessary that I only did because I wanted to. I made sure they were all also getting that perfect, that star. So that gives us this time. We 
can easily divide that by 60 to turn it into minutes, which is the way that most people would read this, which is going to be a total of 19.30 minutes. This comparatively to my original 24.54 minutes. So I definitely did improve. How much did I improve? I improved by 5.24 minutes. That is, I think, a really good improvement for not having done this in a year and not really having played it in between then. And back when I made that original video, I did say it took me approximately 10 seconds factoring in every single board size, right? So, so just taking all of the board sizes together all at once and determining the average that it took me to complete a board no matter what the size. I did the same thing here. Again, last time I said it was about 10 seconds. This time it is 7.72 seconds approximately per board per level. So that is definitely an improvement. Again, obviously I can't prove that I got better unless I just do the speed run again, record it again, and all of the stuff I did last time. However, I think this is a fun way to incorporate math into a stupid little phone game. Maybe most people won't find that fun. I certainly do. I also think that that this is a good way to like guesstimate if I would be any better or not. I'd say that using the numbers that I came up with today and all the averages and all the math, I think it's a good bet that I have in fact improved and that if I did the speed run again, I would be able to shave about five minutes off my time. But that's gonna be the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed coming along uh, on this trip with me. I hope you enjoyed seeing this game again on my channel. And I hope you all enjoyed the math portion that I stuck in there for myself mostly. And that's gonna be it for me today. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye.